Good morning to everybody. Our scriptures on this Sunday morning. This is June 27, 2021. And the year is going by quickly. But I have some scriptures from 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 7 through 15. Practical Christianity. Sometimes Paul could get into deep theology. He was a great writer. The letters that he wrote attest to that. We still have them. Even though they were written in the first century, probably around 50 A.D., Sometimes he got away from theology, in a sense, but in a sense it's still there because he's addressing here to the Corinthians, the little church there at Corinth that he helped start. He's addressing something that's very important to him. He was trying to keep the early church together, all the Churches spread out around the Mediterranean. He believed that that was the key to their survival. If they were able to see themselves as one church. But there was a problem, just like there are today. All these churches, which remember, always remember in the early church that the churches were not like we have today. They were usually in people's homes, but they, here's the deal, they needed, they needed help sometimes, it it cost, it cost to have a church, and Paul and all the rest of the churches were beginning to see this, now the churches down in Jerusalem, that Paul really was not over per se, he was not the father of these churches, that was That was Peter and James and other people involved in the early church. Those churches had become poor. They didn't have enough money to establish where they got together. They didn't have enough money to do what they wanted to in missions. Those that preached and did other things in the church, there was not enough money in Jerusalem for them to be compensated so that they were in peril. And Paul knew this, but he was writing this letter to the Corinthians and he mentioned this fact that they needed help in Jerusalem. Now the church at Corinth and some of the churches around the Mediterranean, they did seem the people there that were part of those churches seemed to be well off most of the time, employed most of the time. So here's what he's writing, if we look at at verse 7. Now as you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in utmost eagerness, and in our love for you, So we want you to excel also in this generous undertaking. Now, this generous undertaking was a collection of money from Paul's churches as he went around to take to Jerusalem to help bail them out of their problems down in Jerusalem. You know, if we look at Christendom today, well, in our own church, the United Methodists, some churches are doing better than others financially. That's just common. And so sometimes the money is taken from the general conference funds to help out maybe smaller churches, maybe churches that the membership cannot give as much as others, 
and help out the other churches. This has been going on for a long time, and it's a it's a good practice because we want our church to be one church with one mission, and that's to bring more people into the church, to be, be about this great mission that Jesus gave us to go into all the world and baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It takes money. It takes money to operate a church. You know, you got your utilities, you got your insurance on the church. Most of the time you are compensating the, the pastor for money that it takes to for him to run his life so that he's able to, to use his energies to be about the mission of the church. So here we got Paul. And, and he's telling, you know, that they're doing well in Corinth. They have good faith. They have, they have received the message, the good news of Jesus Christ. They have a lot in the spiritual area. But yet they also have maybe a little extra money in the financial issues. And so he's pleading for Corinth and some of the other churches to help out the church in Jerusalem. Now in verse 8, I do not say this as a command. In other words, Paul was not, you know, demanding that they give any money. But I'm testing, he says, I'm testing the genuineness of your love against the earnestness of the others. So how much do you love others, Paul is saying, in Corinth? So it was kind of like a test to see if they would give us enough much money for him to carry to Jerusalem as some of the other churches had. In verse 9, For you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, now, Paul didn't really, he had never met the, the Jesus like the other apostles. He, he was not around at the same time where Jesus was, and he didn't really know the situation of Jesus. I know in the Gospels, most of the time, we, we learned that, that Jesus grew up in a, in a little village of Nazareth in the northern part of the Sea of Galilee, and he, you know, his family was just working, a working family. He, we, we don't understand that he grew up rich or had rich. His family was not rich. But yet Paul here, and, and this is very interesting because some people say that Jesus, after he went into his mission and he left home, that he maybe was a little better off than we think, and that some of the fisher, fisher people that he called into his ministry, that they were a little better off than we think. But anyway, Paul is writing that though he was rich, now Jesus was rich in a lot of other ways, yet for your sakes he became poor. So this is a... This is worth thinking about. Jesus was rich, but for the sake of what he was doing, he became poor. That's the way it is those truly called today into the church. Sometimes they, it's come, people come out of places where they have good jobs or, and they give them up to answer the call to be a minister. So, we have to picture this as the way Paul's writing. Maybe he heard this. Maybe it wasn't entirely true, but he's just saying, as I go back and look at this again, for well, you know the generous act of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes, the people's sakes, he became poor so that by his poverty, he became rich. So we can be poor financially, 
but yet spiritually rich. Paul goes on in verse 10, and in this matter I'm giving my advice. It is appropriate for you who began last year not only to do something, but even to desire to do something. Now finish doing it so that your eagerness may be matched by completing it according to your means. In other words, they had been thinking about this plea for help for the church in Jerusalem. Jerusalem had been going on for a while. And the church at Corinth apparently had already said, yes, we'll give. <clears throat> but they hadn't. I've never been a part of any church that people were not generous. They tithed, and, and, and a lot of times money would be found if money was needed. But until we actually let go of money, we haven't done that act of being generous. To giving unto the church here on earth that needs money to operate. <clears throat> but <clears throat> Paul has not demanded this. Paul is not saying, you've got to do this. He's just talking about it, being very careful. So he's, he's wrote this letter. In verse 12, he says, For if the eagerness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has. Nor, not according to what one does not have. So if you have money, he says, and this is very important that the church all around, including those in Jerusalem, can exist, can keep doing the work of the kingdom of God. So not, it's not according to what you have, Paul says, or do not have, but it's according to what you do have. If you have something, can you let go of that something to bail out the church in Jerusalem? Verse 13, I do not mean that there should be relief for others and pressure on you, but it is a question of a fair balance between your present abundances and their need so that their abundance may be for your need in order that there may be a fair balance. In other words, back then it was not organized like we have today. You know, we pay apportionments to the conference and out of their, those apportionments, many good things are done and Sometimes you can help churches that need or pastors that need, and then other times you yourself can draw into this. So that's the way we do it. Back then it, it took longer, but the thing, the, same, the, the thing was going on. Paul says if you give now to help Jerusalem church, it might be in the future that your group, your congregation might need help. And you can draw and others will help you. It's just a fair balance, he says. And then he says, he quotes from somewhere in Scripture, which the only Scriptures that Paul could quote from would have been the Hebrew Bible, but somewhere, and it's not noted here, he just says, as it is written, the one who had much did not have too much. And the one who had little did not have too little. In other words, a very wise way of saying we can have a lot, but it's not good to have too much if we share. If we love others and we share, we don't have too much. If we need something, then we can receive something. We don't have too little. Hope this message has been appropriate for you here on this Sunday morning. God bless you all. In the name of the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen.